Hello friends, tonight we're going to take another look at the CZ Scorpion Micro. I didn't much like this gun, not one bit, and lots of you got very, very angry that I didn't heap praise on this gun. And guess what? I'm not here to heap praise on it now. Instead, we're going to talk about which parts I swapped out and, and what upgrades I made to the gun and why. So we'll talk about why it looks so different now. Uh, after I shot the gun, well, I, I hated it, and I decided to immediately get rid of it. Why would I keep a gun that I hate so much? But then I couldn't let the gun win. I had to figure out how to make it work for me. And after all, other people love this gun. So did I fix it? Do I love it now? Eh, well, uh, we're still not all the way there, but it, it's getting better. Let's see how it turned out. I decided to go on this adventure because I trust all of you. Mostly. Uh, lots of you love your scorpions, and I thought, surely, I'm the problem. It's gotta be me, right? Maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I've been shooting AR-15s too long, and I'll adjust. I didn't quite adjust, so I thought I'd make the gun adjust to me. A brief recap. What did I hate so much, and why? Well, the original grip angle was awful. The selector lever ate the skin off my hand. The charging handle was too small for me to grab. The magazine release just was just weird. Um, the tacky fake suppressor constantly wiggled loose no matter how much Loctite I used. And the trigger, my God, the trigger, it was very, very bad. And the recoil from the simple blowback gun was uh, extremely jarring. This is caused in part by the inherent qualities of a blowback action, but it also had to do with the ergonomics of the gun uh, and how low the factory sights are and the strange, insane grip angle. Every time you pull the trigger, it's like getting smacked with a sock full of pennies really hard. The Scorpion Micro easily dishes out some prison justice, and it does so without mercy. And I, I was not enjoying that. So I have a system that I use to review things. Think of it as a go it as three questions, but for dangerous and sharp objects. We're not critiquing plays, films, or literature, but guns can be works of art, I suppose, probably. Um, so here, here are the three questions kind of adjusted to work for guns and knives. Number one, what was the artist or gun or knife manufacturer trying to do? Two, how well did he, she, they do it? And three, was it worth doing? When I reviewed the Scorpion initially, I answered these three questions. I try to make sure that every review answers these three questions, whether I say it or not. These questions help a person review something as fairly as, as possible. We're all completely biased. We're, we're humans, after all. But this at least helps you try to cut through some of that bias. Um, we can't review a Scorpion as an AR-15 or as a Glock, for instance. We have to consider the intention of the builder and then critique the gun based on how well the manufacturer did in attempting to meet those goals. So as I sought to revamp the Scorpion, I asked myself what the Scorpion Micro is, what its concept is, and then I thought about how I could refine that concept to work for me and my hands and personal tastes and all that shit. So the Scorpion seeks to be a lightweight PDW, able to be carried with ease for long periods of time and then used in a pinch. Therefore, it should be light and very easy to use quickly. To answer the other two questions, no, it wasn't done well initially. It was half-assed and we needed it to be whole-assed. And yes, it was definitely worth doing. Such a gun would be very, very handy. And I think with the changes I've made here, I think we're, we're closer to that. So with that concept in mind, I replaced parts on the Scorpion until it became what I felt it should have been when it left the factory, or at least pretty close. And now a shameless plug. YouTube will not monetize my videos. Between the cursing, the wiener jokes, and the unorthodox political opinions, I am not the sort of channel that YouTube wants to give money to. Imagine that. Videos like this are expensive, and I'm only able to make them with your support. Money is tight in the summer, and I can only make a few videos per month. If you like my content, please support me on Patreon to help me make better videos more often. I owe many thanks to my patrons, and I'm excited to welcome Gluck and Dante Roberto to the Gun Penguin family. You're both awesome, and I can't thank you enough. So what do we need to change to meet our goal of making this an awesome PDW? So first, let's talk about what CZ got right. The Manticore brace is perfect. Let's look at that folded in here. I think that'll get it in frame. I can barely see what I'm doing here. Yeah, there we go. I'm trying to not just completely throw everything out of frame. But so this thing works really well. It deploys in a snap. It's really, really nice. It's high quality. It's lightweight. The HBI handguards are small and lightweight. This stuff is great. These came on here from the factory. 
But that grip angle, it was insane and severe, and such grip angles don't work well with small guns. That's why we're all moving away from the mil-spec grip angles on AR-15s. A short length of pull makes for an uncomfortable angle of the wrist with a grip like that. The tiny charging handle makes the gun very fumbly to operate and prevents one from clearing malfunctions easily. The magazine release couldn't decide whether it wanted to be, I don't know, a, a paddle, like an AK or a button. The magazines also rarely drop free, so who the fuck knows? The safety on the stock micro is enormously stiff and difficult to disengage. It's a struggle, and I had to break my firing grip every time to engage or disengage it. That's not in line with the Scorpion Micro as a PDW that can be brought into action very quickly. The trigger is a mess by any standard and sucks no matter what the gun was intended to do. It, it needs help, y'all. It's fucking bad. The factory sights are fine, and I appreciate that CZ included some, but they require you to jam your, your fucking face down on the brace bars, and I don't know whose face works with these sights. I don't know. So a red dot is the best solution for a PDW. I do not at all expect CZ to include a red dot. I'm just saying that you should consider it necessary if you're going to buy one of these. Which upgrades did I choose? Most of the upgrades are from HP Industries. Their parts are amazing, and they should be standard on every Scorpion leaving the factory, whether it's the micro version or not. The Micro Scorpion comes standard with the HP Micro M-Lock handguard, like we said, and the Manticore brace system. That fake suppressor is an Osprey, uh, presumably made by Silencer Co. The fake Osprey can only be tightened using a proprietary tool that doesn't come with the gun, and I'm not even sure that CZ makes one, but luckily HP Industries comes to the rescue. They make one. So that's the third-party shit that comes bolted to the gun from the factory. Here's what I added. Starting at the front, I pulled off the fake can to find a very, very short barrel. It ends about right there, I think. It's much shorter than the handguard. I get that recessed suppressors are all the rage right now, but this is very inconvenient, and I see why HB's own micro barrel uh, that they sell as a kit with this handguard is, reaches the actual end of the damn thing like it ought to. I will eventually mount a can on this gun, and so maybe then I'll be happy that, that the barrel's recessed. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it then. Uh, but I put a Caw Valley linear compensator on there in the meantime. The charging handle is the big polymer one that HB sells. There's an aluminum option, but it apparently scrapes the handguard. I don't much care about that sort of thing, but at the time I was pretty sure I was going to get rid of this awful thing as soon as I could, so I went with, with the plastic. Um, I put the original charging handle on the other side. We'll look at that later. I like this arrangement. Uh, the magazine release is the HB Duckbill, the aluminum version in black. This allows one to operate the magazine release like an AK, which is good because the magazines rarely drop free, for my example. Thank you, CZ. The bolt release on mine is stock because... Well, the factory one is great. Also, I don't know if there are actually any replacements for that. But the factory bowl release is amazing, and I don't know why all the other controls don't feel as good. Weird. The trigger is an HB Industries Delta in black. Inside the trigger pack is the HBI string, uh, spring kit. String kit. Wow. Spring kit, I'm trying to say. On the left side, the uh, selector lever is the HB thumb safety lever. On the right, it's the AK style lever. Really cool. And it's the longer AK lever, not the uh, not the short one. The grip is the Magpul Mo grip. These things are hard to find, but damn, it is very, very nice. Uh, the optic is a Trigicon MRO with the low mount. And now let's review all of these parts individually, talk about what they do and why I chose them and how they make this turd less turd-like. The Call Valley Linear Compensator. Listen, I bought the Call Valley Linear Compensatory thingy because it looks cool and I needed something to extend the barrel past the handguard. That's it. CZ assumed that everyone was going to want a recessed barrel or that they would keep that ugh, terrible fake suppressor on there so the barrel ends like, like there, like I said. The fake can came loose constantly, even when I gave it a little blue bath in Loctite and that made me angry. So I initially took the little middle piece from the fake Osprey and, and kind of stuck it on there the little uh, cylinder in the middle, that was fine, but I needed a real a adult solution, not the kind of solution that a moron would come up with. This seemed like a, a, as good an idea as any. 
I don't think that it benefits me at all when I'm firing the gun. It's said to direct the blast forward and maybe reduce the concussion and therefore reduce damage to your ears in enclosed areas if you're not wearing hearing protection. Maybe it does. I don't know. I haven't exactly fired it without hearing protection in an enclosed area. But I can tell you, it's well made. It looks very cool. And most importantly, it stays on the gun with only a little bit of Loctite. CZ, what do you think I am? You think I'm fucking uh, made of Loctite? I can't keep buying this shit. So just make parts to stay on the gun. Uh, this also weighs a little bit less than the fake can, which was adding excessive and completely ridiculous and pointless weight to the front of a gun that is supposed to be a light and handy PDW thing. So I appreciate the loss of weight there. It also makes the gun feel better balanced, not having that huge can on there and just having, you know, a, a two extra ounces or whatever it is out front. So this is a great solution if you hate the fake Osprey, which you should definitely hate it. Let's talk about fake cans for a second. They are not cool. They have never been cool. They will never be cool. They are stupid and tacky and awful. There, I said it. We were all thinking it. HBI Pro Stock Extended Charging Handle. Is Pro Stock the brand or the name of it? I don't know. Either way, I bought this extended polymer charging handle from HP Industries, and it is excellent. It's easy to install, and it feels so much better. I moved the original one to the right side because why the hell not? May as well. Uh, my left arm has diminished function from an injury, and I have trouble gripping small things. Um, as my hand just struggles with fine motor shit. I don't know what the hell this motion is. I don't know why I did that. Uh, this is a bigger handle makes it so that I can easily cock the gun. Oh, yeah. And manipulate the bolt in any fashion that I need. Uh, the gun is much less of a pain in the ass to use uh, with this extended handle. The handle's still wearing in, so it's a little stiff, but the tolerances are so much better. The stock one is a little flappy. This one. Is not so much. Um, the flappiness uh, of the stock one does not assist you in operating the gun as you would imagine and gives the whole thing a really cheap, shitty feel. This new one feels a lot more solid. And by the way, I have, of course, cleared uh, the gun. I'm not just like reaching in front, of, in front of a loaded gun or anything. But yeah, definitely clear. HP Industries Duckbill Magazine release. This is a fantastic upgrade part. The original magazine release wanted to be an HK European style pistol release, only it wasn't because the magazines don't fall out of the fucking gun when the bolt is open. And it's, it's okay if magazines don't drop free if you have an AK or MP5 style paddle magazine release. You grip the magazine and the release all at once and you pull the magazine out and I probably just hit the camera. I'm sorry about that. Easy. Uh, but you couldn't quite do that with the stock release. You could maybe get at it with your thumb, but it was really weird. The HBI release adds a nice huge paddle for you to grip, and the mag changes are a breeze. It even makes this very satisfying noise. You can press the HBI release with your trigger finger like the old stock one, but mostly the HBI release is, is a little bit too far away for that. And you have fingers like mine anyway. And uh, why press when you can pull? Uh, whatever, whatever that means. This makes the gun feel a little bit more like an HK G3, maybe even uh, even like something a little bit more sophisticated, maybe like an MP5 or something really less sophisticated like an AK, um, although I, I love AKs. That's, that's not a slight, by the way. But it helps the Scorpion decide what it is and how it wants mag changes to work. Why the fuck wasn't this stock part on the micro? I, I don't know. I don't know. This gun feels so much better. This should have left the factory with this installed. And we have to ask, why don't the magazines drop free? Would it have been that much harder to design magazines that fall out, uh, even with the bolt open? Probably not. Other manufacturers do it all the time. HBI Delta Trigger Shoe and Spring Kit. All the upgrades we're talking about today are, are probably essential, but this one went the greatest distance toward helping me bond with this gun on some level, or at least uh, detest it a little bit less. Uh, we're not friends, this gun and I, but I can at least shoot it and enjoy myself thanks to uh, this triggering and spring kit. The stock trigger was hilariously awful. Truly, it made me laugh. It's tough to describe, but I'll, I'll do my best. So the factory trigger is a very heavy uh, 10 pounds or so, maybe more. That's what it felt like to me. But heavy isn't necessarily bad. I like mil-spec AR triggers quite a bit. But a good mil-spec trigger is crisp and therefore can, can still be shot well. And I'm not saying that you can't learn to shoot any trigger well, but a good crisp break certainly helps. 
but the scorpion trigger had no discernible wall. You just mash the trigger rearward, and somewhere in there, the gun goes off. Uh, the reset is terrible, depositing your finger back at the very beginning of travel. It's rough. Working on the trigger group is also very frustrating. The design is simple, but it's very fiddly, a real pain in the old dick. I do all my own work on my guns, and I'm no stranger to changing out some springs, but this was bad. They should have just used an AR-15 trigger group. Everybody should. Uh, so once I had the springs installed, after nearly hurling the trigger group at the wall out of frustration, I installed the new shoe, which was a breeze, and now the trigger feels, uh, it's it's pretty okay. It's it's not good, but it's, it's pretty fine. Um, it works, and that's not HB's fault. Looking at the trigger group, you'd have to replace pretty much the whole fucking thing to change the way the trigger feels. Uh, the dog shit feel is inherent to the design, and that's why the CZ Custom Trigger replaces most of it. But the CZ Custom option costs exponentially more than the HB, and the HB is what most folks are going to want to order, myself included. The Delta here changes the angle of the shoe to give you more leverage, and it's wider, making the trigger face very comfortable. The springs reduce the pull weight down to eh, 5 pounds or so. Not bad at all. The trigger is improved tenfold for about 45 bucks. That's awesome, HB. You're great. When you buy your Scorpion, you should just go ahead and order the trigger stuff before you've even shot it. You're definitely going to want this. So let's look at the pull now. All right. So we pull it rearward. There's no wall or anything, and then it just goes off somewhere in there. Let's look at the reset. The reset is still very long, about the same distance as the overall travel of the trigger. It doesn't reset with much vigor, but that's because we've reduced the weight of the return spring. That's what you're fighting against so hard with the stock spring set. It's a trade-off, and a good one in my opinion. If I release the trigger with some vigor, it works great, and um, it never has any trouble resetting. Let's look at it again from the beginning. Pull it rearward. Yeah, it just kind of kind of breaks somewhere in there. But this is still a colossal improvement. It is so much better. So the trigger moves smoothly rearward until it breaks. No wall, like I said, but the movement is smooth and the trigger face feels really, really nice. Big improvement. This upgrade is essential and it makes the gun feel drastically better for very little money. HB found an inventive cheap solution for a problem that should have been solved at the CZ factory. HBI selector levers. On the left side of the gun, I have the HB thumb selector lever and on the right side is the HB AK lever, the long one. The stock safety levers are the motherfucking worst. I had a very, very hard time engaging them without breaking my firing grip, and the one on the right chewed the skin off of my knuckle every time the gun fired. By far, the stock safety levers are the worst that I've ever seen on any gun ever. CZ knows that people hate them, and they've made no effort to fix the problem. I ran into more jank, uh, courtesy of the trigger group, when I went to swap the selectors. You have to remove the safety lever axle thingy to remove the trigger group from the lower while swapping the trigger springs. I immediately could see that the safety levers felt like rusty R2-D2 and C-3PO sex, and the axle moves between the two positions because a piece of steel flexes to allow the movement before snapping down into the next groove like a super hinky detent. Why the fuck isn't it just a regular detent? And why the fuck doesn't everyone just use AR-15 trigger groups? But anyway, wait until you see the installation video. It's an utter nightmare. So I got the new levers installed, and let me tell you, those set screws are waiting to strip. Don't change these fucking things often. You'll be, you'll be crying before you know it. And once they were installed, though, they feel great. Really, really awesome. Uh, I can now put the safety on and then take it off. Holy shit, imagine that. Look at it. Wow, that's crazy. I feel like a, a god able to put the safety on and off. No man should have all that power. The sky's the limit. I, much like the feel of the trigger, there was no way for HB to fundamentally change how the safety works. But they gave you this long AK lever that you can operate with your index finger, and that length gives you the leverage to overcome the jank. But it's still too stiff to flip up on the left side with my thumb without breaking my grip a little bit. I have to kind of tilt that way. Yeah. But I only use that one to quickly take the safety off when my AR-15 instincts kind of kick in in the heat of the moment. 
Uh, much of the time, I exclusively use the right AK lever, and the rest of the time, I activate the safety with the AK lever and my index finger, and then I take the safety off with my thumb using the lever on the left like so. The long lever is a stroke of genius, and without that, this safety would still suck the proverbial big one. Again, I'm really impressed with HB Industries' ingenuity and ability to find a very simple solution to a very stupid problem. The Magpul Mo Grip. This grip, like the trigger, makes the gun feel far more tolerable. The original grip has this weird, super extreme angle that contorts your wrist all weird. It smacks of something designed to look cool rather than be comfortable. Really, the whole gun smacks of that. But anyway, the grip sucked, it hurt, and it wasn't very grippy. The Mo has the right grip angle and the right amount of grip. If you close your eyes, you almost forget that you're holding a scorpion. The Mo is simple and cheaper than many of the competing replacement grips. The only problem is that it's hard to find right now. But you could be watching this from the year 2050, in which case I'm sorry that humanity was enslaved by Amazon Alexas. I tried to warn you. Also, I'm sorry that humanity hasn't invented a better gun than this awful thing. But hopefully the Magpul Scorpion Grip is more readily available in 2050 to help you fight the human Alexa war. The Trijicon MRO. The MRO is my favorite red dot. It's light, it's small, and it doesn't give you red dot tunnel vision like you're looking through a toilet paper tube. I mounted it on the low mount, the standard non-QD one as it weighs the least. You'll note that I removed the factory sights. Though they were nice ghost ring, ghost, what word did I just say? Though they were nice ghost ring sights, they sat far too low and one had to jam one's face down onto the brace arms to use the sights. Also, while ghost ring sights are great for precision shots, this isn't a precision weapon. And some sights that allow one to maintain better awareness would have done a better job, like diopter sights or hell, something, I don't know, akin to standard pistol sights like you see on the HK MP7. Also, the standard sights weigh a ton. That was another reason to take them off. The MRO, even with the low mount, it sits a little bit higher and the brace doesn't batter your cheekbones to death as a result. Holding your head higher lets you maintain a sense of your surroundings and it keeps your body in a position more conducive to managing recoil. The MRO keeps the gun very light and small while giving you a great field of view for a tiny red dot. It's the perfect pairing. I like the MRO on just about anything and it works really well here. How do these upgrades change the feel of the Scorpion? The Scorpion feels like a different gun. Mag changes are a breeze, you can use the safety, you can easily work the bolt, and thanks to the trigger upgrades, accurate shots are a breeze. But what about the recoil impulse? Before, the gun sucked to shoot. The brace arms would bash you in the face and there was a ton of muzzle rise, and extra time was spent reacquiring the target. It was tough to go fast, and I was slower with the Scorpion than with my Beretta, Glock, or PPQ. That's not right. I should not be slower with the Scorpion than with those other pistols. A friend of mine experienced a bruised face courtesy of the Scorpion, and she wasn't eager to fire more than a few shots. She also noted that the sights felt sort of inappropriate for the gun, and the grip hurt her wrist. Each round twisted the gun in my hand, and the end is so short you can't grab it to control the recoil like you can with an AR-15. If I had to quantify it, I felt like this little 9mm blowback gun had two or three times the recoil of my 11 and a half inch AR-15 pistol. With recoil like that, who the fuck would shoot 9mm over 5.56? But I remembered in-range TV talking about how much the Spore G3 stock sort of altered the nature of the G3's somewhat brisk recoil. My hope was that the upgrades you've seen here would alter the geometry of the gun in a way that would make the recoil more pleasant. Luckily, this hypothesis was correct. Blowback guns have a lot of recoil, and arguably CZ should have gone with a different operating mechanism, but they didn't. There's nothing we can do about it now. But removing the iron sights and changing the MRO puts your face at a different height and lets you hold the gun in a more natural way to control recoil with your hands, and your face is no longer battered. This change alone cut my split times in half with this gun. The Magpul grip puts your firing hand and arm in a more natural position to have good trigger control and to manage recoil. I feel like I can really grip the gun and hold it in place when firing rapid strings and I'm controlling the gun rather than having it bounce me around all over the place. I still feel like this gun needs an angled foregrip. It's a pistol so I can't uh, install a vertical foregrip thanks to some really fucking stupid laws, but most angled ones don't fit. This is just a little too short here. So I wish there was just some sort of way to clamp 
my my hands around the front end of this gun like an AR-15 to control it better. But it may just not be possible, and that's okay. But it would definitely help me further uh, control the recoil, and the gun might even be even more pleasant at that point. But yeah, an angled grip, uh, that'd go a long way. I'll see if there's uh, something that can be rigged up to make that work. It's it's all a trade-off for such a short forend and for such a light gun. Well, it's a light gun now that it's uh, that it's shed some weight. Final thoughts. Wow, the Scorpion requires a lot of work. Am I right? I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I bought this gun. I knew it wasn't my favorite gun ever, but I figured I'd get it, test it for the channel, show it to you guys, and maybe enjoy myself along the way. Instead, I took a gun that I utterly despise, and I made it into something that's it's decent. It's pretty damn decent. I kind of like this gun now. It shoots pretty well, and it's been very reliable. Though the simple blowback mechanism might not feel great, it runs well, and with all the ergonomic problems overcome, it's much easier to overlook that the recoil impulse could be a little bit milder. I don't mind it so much now. And the gun has been very reliable. I've fired just over 1,500 rounds through it and cleaned it only once after 200 rounds. I'm kind of trying to see how far I can push this thing. So why have I been so hard on this gun? There are three reasons. One, we don't need another gun that is entirely form over function. This gun kind of glamours people. You see it on the shelf and you think, wow, cool, that looks like a, a space gun. And the exterior plastic shell is beautiful and sleek and cool. But then you shoot it and you realize it sucks to use and every part and control feels janky and cheap. And then it occurs to you that it's just a big bulky blowback bolt shoved into a, a plastic shell. That brings us to reason number two why I've been so hard on this gun. It's very expensive. These are at least 1100 bucks most places, uh, 1200 or more many other places. Folks defending this gun always tell me it's cheap, cheaper than the competition and therefore a good deal. But is it? The competing guns that cost far more usually aren't simple blowback for one thing. They're buffered in some way or roller delayed or whatever. The Scorpion's mechanism is so simple it should cost far less than a grand. Even the lowly Strybog's mechanism is more than just a big hunk of metal on a stick pushed around by a spring. What the fuck is inside the Scorpion that costs a grand? The shell feels like it's made out of melted down Reliant K CDs and the rest of it is a bolt riding on a stick. If the Scorpion was $600, I wouldn't be complaining. To the contrary, I'd be praising it. But I would still be criticizing how little CZ has done to improve the gun. That's the third thing. They know the controls suck. They know the trigger sucks. And they had a chance to improve the micro, but they didn't. Even with all the production delays, it's still just a regular old Scorpion with some new shit bolted onto it. CZ, you need to do better. If you don't want to add a buffer, that's fine. I understand if you can't, at this point, radically alter the internal mechanism. I think you should still make an attempt at it, but if you're unwilling to go that far, I could understand that. But you need to change the other stuff. This gun could dominate the market. It could be the PCC of choice for shooters across the country, but you need to clean up the feel. We shouldn't have to buy the gun and immediately dump $200 into it to make it passably decent. Anyway, I'm going to go enjoy my Scorpion. I'm going to try. After all, I've put all this time and money into it. Is it even a Scorpion anymore with all these part swaps? It feels like something different altogether. But I did want you to know I am actually starting to have a good time with this gun. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Good night. You know it's not that